Safety is important for fiber optics in the classroom and on the job. But fiber optics has some unique requirements for safety, so let's take a look at them. Safety in the lab or on the job site should be the number one concern for everyone. Besides the usual safety issues for construction, generally covered under local laws, fiber optics adds concerns for eye safety, chemicals, electric arcs from fusion splicing, disposal of fiber shards, and more. Before beginning any lab exercises or installation, safety rules should be posted on the classroom wall, lab wall, or on the job site and reviewed with all on-site personnel. All personnel must wear the usual construction safety gear, plus everyone working with fiber must wear eye protection. Many people are concerned that the most dangerous part of fiber optic work was the chance you might get your eyes damaged by the laser light in the fiber. They had generally confused optical fiber used in communications with the output of high-powered lasers used in labs or in laser surgery, or perhaps they had just seen too many science fiction movies. In fact, most fiber optic systems do not have sufficient power to cause harm to your eyes. But the problem is your eye cannot see most of the light in fiber optic systems because fiber optic systems work in the infrared region not in the visible section of the spectrum. You often need to use a digital camera or a power meter or even the camera in your cell phone to determine if the infrared light is actually present in the system with which you're working. Most fiber optic systems actually have low power, not enough to damage your eye. And the light exiting the optical fiber exits in a cone so that by the time the light reaches your eye, you only see a very small part of it, and the fact that it's expanding makes it impossible to actually focus on your retina where it could call, cause harm. However, there are exceptions, and those bear watching. Long-distance systems using dense wavelength division multiplexing may have many different fiber optic signals carried at different wavelengths of light, and those are amplified by fiber amplifiers. Those can actually have significant amounts of, of power, enough to perhaps be dangerous to your eyes. Microscopes can also be a problem. Microscopes can focus all of the light coming out of an optical fiber into your eye, causing it to be hazardous. Never look into a fiber with either your eye or a microscope unless you have determined that no optical power is coming from the fiber. If possible, use a microscope with a built-in infrared filter because they're designed to protect your eye from the light you cannot see. Visual fault locators also can use high-powered light, but this light is visible so you can see it easily. When you're using one of these, it's always good to never look directly into the end of a fiber, but look at an angle so you can see if the light is visible before you look at it directly because it might be enough if not to harm your eye, at least to be very uncomfortable. What most people consider the most dangerous part is fiber scraps. Fiber scraps are everywhere. You produce them when you're preparing cable, stripping fiber, and cleaving it. The danger is they can stick in your skin, get in your eyes, or contaminate food or drink. They're very sharp, very small, very hard to see, and potentially very dangerous. There are a number of ways to avoid the danger of fiber shards or fiber scraps. Work on a dark surface so you can see the scraps. It also helps you see the fibers you're working with. Have a dedicated container on the work site to dispose of fiber scraps. And when you're finished, seal all the scraps up in the container and dispose of that container properly. Working with fiber also exposes you to certain chemicals. You use cleaning fluids and solvents, adhesives with connectors, and flammable liquids. Even simple liquids like isopropyl alcohol are flammable. Some of them have harmful fumes. You should handle them carefully and keep material safety data sheets available so you know what the dangers are with any chemicals you use. Workplace safety is always an issue. Fiber can be installed indoors or outdoors 
aerial or underground pulled in conduit. It may require working on poles, in bucket trucks, in underground vaults, above ceilings, and on construction sites. And all of these require care and working to prevent accidents. Government regulation covers a lot of workplace safety rules, but then there are lots of other special ones when we're dealing with fiber. Every contractor needs workplace safety rules to cover things like climbing poles, working in bucket trucks, working with heavy machinery when pulling cables, or working indoors, for example, above ceilings. Even with fiber, you have to be cautious around electrical cables because although fiber may not be conductive, the cables that you're working near may be and can be potential shock hazards. Burying cables outdoors can be extremely hazardous because you're working around other buried cables and pipelines, especially gas pipelines. Know what's there before you dig. Call the toll-free number in the U.S., 811, or go to the website, call 811.com, before you begin any digging for burying cables. On the FOA homepage, there's a link to a fiber optic safety poster. You can print to post in your classroom or on the work site. But let's review some basic safety rules that everyone should follow. Beginning, of course, with everyone on the work site or in the classroom, including the instructor, should always wear safety glasses. You should treat all fiber optic scraps the same as you would treat glass splinters. Pick them up, put them in a disposable container, seal them up and dispose of them carefully after you're finished. Don't touch your eyes and especially not contact lenses after you've been working with fiber until you've carefully washed your hands. Always work in well ventilated areas. Keep all combustible materials like the isopropyl alcohol we mentioned safely away from curing ovens and fusion splicers and any other sources of arcs or flames. Avoid breathing chemicals you're working with, like adhesives when you're doing terminations, and avoid skin contact. Keep all food and beverages out of the work area. Uh, it's not a good idea to use used coffee cups to dispose of fiber scraps because you might pick it up and try to drink from it by mistake. If fiber particles are ingested, they can cause internal hemorrhaging. And don't ever smoke while working around fiber optic systems or fiber optic work. Or for that matter, don't ever smoke. Never look directly into the end of any fiber optic cable, especially with a microscope, until you're positive there's no light source at the other end. Since it's infrared light, your eye can't see it. So use a fiber optic power meter or digital camera or the camera on your phone to ensure the fiber is dark. And when you're using an optical tracer or continuity checker, look at the fiber from the angle at least six inches away so that you can determine if visible light is present without it harming your eyes. Use a black work mat on your work area to help spot fiber scraps. It'll also help you see fibers you're working with. Keep track of all your fiber and cable scraps and dispose of them properly. If available, wear disposable lab aprons to minimize fiber particles on your clothing. And those fiber particles on your clothing can later get into food, drinks, or be ingested by other means. They can also be carried to other locations where they can be a hazardous to other people not around the work site. Finally, thoroughly clean your work area when you're done. Dispose of all scraps properly. Put all fiber optic scraps in a properly marked container and seal it for disposal. Be careful because in some workplaces, Fiber scraps are considered hazardous waste and have to be handled uh, under special rules. We're the Fiber Optic Association, the Professional Society of Fiber Optics, and we want you to work safely when you're working with fiber optics.